I call it corazón y alma, heart and soul. My grandmother, I got so many of her craft supplies after her passing. I came up with the idea for doing this mural. I wanted to paint cross stitches to honor her love of that craft. You put so much of your own heart and soul into your craft. So that's what I, why I chose those words. I love vintage things. I'm very like, I guess you could say femi. <laughs> and so I, I love putting the two together. And that's kind of what I feel about this one too, is that it has that like street art style, but it's also very like delicate and that I'm trying to do this like cross stitch pattern over it. So. Murals have a lot of like a big history, a rich history, especially with like Latino culture. I wanted to make a piece in honor of all the things that get lost when you leave your homeland. People who have been displaced like spend a lot of time thinking about just what they're missing out from being far away from home. But I came to the U.S. when I was so young. So even though like I spend a lot of time thinking about like Mexico, I definitely don't feel like I belong there. So the cactus is actually gonna be this woman's family. So those are her kids. And even though like she talks to them all the time, she's really connected to them. But at the same time, she's really sad because she doesn't get to see them. And that's like the most important thing for her, just to be with them, you know? Butterflies representing the immigration, the essential rights of a human to, to be able to move whatever you want in this world without boundaries, well, without country. borders. Families get separated. And even though you like keep in touch with them far away, you don't get to see them for many, many, many years, you know. The family just stays together forever. To my mother. It doesn't matter if you have a, a division or a wall or anything, but it's kind of sad at the same time that you don't get to see them in, you know, like in person. I don't know if that makes sense. And I think by nature, when you have in trouble, you try to find something better. And then you decide to move to a different place and try your luck and see what happens. A little over a year ago, we got commissioned by um, this march in Washington, D.C. to um, paint something that represented the resilience and resistance of the communities of not just Salt Lake City, but of this region. At one point, somebody was like, you know what, I really feel like and compensates like the resilience of this region is cactuses. There's so many things that try to kill them. They just survive in harsh environments and somehow they're still here. It's, it's magical, you know? I came here when I was 12 years old. I'm a survivor of a lot of things. I'm a survivor of domestic violence, of a lot of different forms of abuse. I just think about all of the things that I've survived, that I've lived through, and all of the things that my friends, people in this collective have lived through. And I guess when I think of cactuses, I think of you are so powerful, you are so strong, you are meant to survive, you know? I just look at the way that they give life to one another, the way that they grow in community, and they just, they symbolize everything. Being part of the uh, Nopalera Artist Collective has been awesome. To do things together, that's that's really why I got excited about doing this. Like artists, we, we work alone so often. It's, super nice to be able to do something together, especially something like this. It was really exciting to be a part of a collective of artists from similar backgrounds who share similar experiences. And who doesn't want to be involved in a collective about cactuses and nopales? <laughs> They're so cute. We like making art that voices our place here in this world. We're here, alive, thriving, surviving. You're not gonna kill us. You can put us in the harshest condition and we're still gonna keep growing. We're still gonna keep blooming. We're just gonna get tougher and stronger. And watch out, because we got thorns.